Hey guys, in this video, I'll go over some log properties. In fact, I'll go over all the log properties. There's only really three of them. Um, so let's see. <clears throat> One log property looks like this. So say you have log base A of a product of two numbers, so like B and C. Um, this just simplifies, or you could say expands into log of A of B, or I should say log base A of B plus log base A of C. So in other words, when you have a product inside your logarithm, you can split it up into a sum. Um, but don't always think that, you know, it has to go one way in terms of like expanding um, a log into a sum. Uh, you can also go the other way. So you could start with a sum of logs. And as long as they have the same base, you can combine the sum into a single log where you have just um, a product of the two numbers. So for example, um, let's see, let's do something like um, log, oops, log uh, of, uh, let's do um, 10, right? Uh, log base, 10 of 50 plus log base 10 of 2. Um, and remember what logs are saying there. It's like a question. It's like, what power would you have to raise 10 to, right, to get 50? Um, and if you think about it for a little bit, probably not like an easy number, right? We know 10 to the first is 10. 10 squared is 100, um, which, you know, so... 50 somewhere between 10 and 100, which means the exponent would need to be somewhere between one and two, right? Um, same thing, what power do you have to raise 10 to two to get um, two? It's not so obvious. However, if we take advantage of this property and we work it kind of in the reverse order that I gave it here, then the property I just gave you says that this is log base 10 of 50 times two. Well, that's 100, right? And log base 10 of 100 is just two. And so the individual logs will be something, you know, between, like I said, this will be somewhere between one and two. Um, this one will be somewhere between zero and one. But when you combine them, you get a nice clean answer. So that's just like one very simple example of why you might, might want to use this property. All right, let's look at another property. It's, it's pretty similar. Oh, by the way, I don't know if you're someone who really likes names. Um, I believe the name of this is the product property. Um, so let's talk about the quotient property then. So if you have log base A of B over C, so product of two numbers, uh, sorry, a quotient of two numbers. Um, now, well, I'll, I'll say something in a second here. First, let's see how we can expand this. So this would just be the log of A or base A rather of, now you always do the, the, the numerator First, so log base A of B minus log base A of C. Now, there's something very important here. Um, you can't, let's say, C. Well, it's actually kind of true for both C and B. Um, but um, C especially cannot equal zero. Uh, because then you'd have zero in the denominator. And we just know, like, in general, you can't have division by zero. Um, but to be honest, you can't have B equaling zero either um, because you can't take the log of something and get zero. So in other words, you can't raise anything to an exponent and get zero. So I will say also B can't be zero in this case. And to be honest, that would apply in the thing above because you couldn't have, you know, for B and C here, you couldn't take logs of zero. But anyways, we'll just assume that um, this applies to everything. So um, I already gave you an example of how you can combine um, you can, you can use this property, uh, uh, the property above, and combine it to get a simple answer. You could do something very similar for this one. I'm not going to do an example right now. Um, I will, in, in other videos, do a bunch of examples and show you guys how to apply it. So let's, let's jump right into the third property. Okay, so another property here is if you have log base A of B raised to the C power. And the property says 
that if you have your, your input to your log being raised to an exponent, you can take that exponent and put it out front of the log and multiply it. So in other words, this is just C times the log of A, sorry, log base A of B. So B is no longer being raised to an exponent, it's just the log base A of B. Um, and so this is incredibly useful, in fact, because it allows you to take something that is being raised to an exponent and bring that exponent sort of down in front and just simply be a coefficient, something you multiply by. Um, and so if you haven't gotten to, you know, the level of like maybe calculus or maybe even pre-calculus, you might not see the immediate benefits of that. But when we do exponential equations, that's when you have something, you know, raised to the x power where your variable's in the, in the exponent position. Um, sometimes, you know, you need to solve for x. You need to, to get x sort of isolated. And when it's in an exponent position, that's kind of tricky to get it isolated, right? Well, not if you use that property. So, for example, if you did um, the log base a of a to the x, so if, if, in other words, if you had something like this and you simply took the log of it, you can take advantage of this property because then you can get the x out of the exponent. And this becomes x times log base a of just a. And if you think about it, log base a of a, right, it's saying what power would you have to raise a to to get a? Well, just one, right? So in other words, this log becomes just a one. And so it's x times 1, or in other words, it's just x. And so this is a really handy way to isolate variables that are, in my words, trapped in the exponent positions. Um, OK, so these are the three log properties here. So you've got like a product or yeah, product property. When you have a product inside your log, you can expand it into a sum. You have a quotient property. So when you have a quotient inside your log, you can um, expand that into a difference and then you have an exponent kind of property or power property where if you have some um, input inside your log that's being raised to an exponent you can bring that exponent down out in front and um, yeah I hope uh, you find this video helpful and I will follow it up with a bunch of just examples of solving problems and applying these properties thanks